My name is Lisa Kostova, your host, and we also have um, the amazing team of Women in Product here supporting us on the event side, as well as our co-presenters, Evelyn Chu and Malika Gargea. So drop in the chat where you're joining us from. I would love to know. And also, uh, let's start with what is your one word intention for 2023, since we're still kind of in the beginning of the new year. I'd love to hear your one word intention for 2023. Evelyn, what's yours? Hi, Lisa, and hi, everyone. I'm so happy to be here and happy new year, everybody. I think the word I have for 2023 is experiment. Mm -hmm. um, I read something yesterday that I thought was so profound, and it goes, who I am and what I do for a living are two different things. So I feel like so much time I am embedded in what I do, and I just wanted to take this opportunity to refresh and experiment and try new things. Love it. So we have some people dropping their intentions for the year. Debjani Panda is saying it's calm. Mia is saying courage. Ooh. Um, Ariana, <laughs> you can say that. Uh, open. Love it. Um, Malika, what is yours? Powerful, says Sarah. Uh, Malika, it's probably a your... little redundant, but I, I actually would say intention or presence. Mm -hmm. Um this feels like a, a year that I want to think everything through with intention. Um, a lot of the time it's easy to get wrapped up in distractions and unnecessary things. Um, so just intention, doing things with intention and being present. I love that. I, um, I changed my word recently. It was different, but you know, uh, it's, it's allowed. Mine is uh, create or creative. I have a lot of amazing plans to support the women in tech community and more events, more programs, more uh, opportunities and looking forward to starting to do more in-person um, connections because I think we really missed that over the last several years. All right, let's see if we have more words. If you're just joining us, welcome. We're going to get started in just a second here. If you're joining us, drop your one word intention for 2023. We'd love to hear that. Uh, so far, we have uh, intention, we have experiment, we have calm, we have open, we have courage, we have powerful. Um, so we'd love to see yours. All right. Surrender, says Kim, like that. Surrender takes a lot of courage, right? It's hard. Sirone, hi Sirone. Grace, mm, Grace definitely has to do with surrender as well. Oof. Um, opening doors, closing doors, says Kristen, and she's apologizing. And that's not just one word. Okay, you're allowed. <laughs> closing doors, opening doors. I like that. There's a sense of possibility there. There's a sense of not attachment to something specific and just. Be open, surrendering. Again, all the words that we have, open, surrender. Uh, appreciate, says Ayesha. Uh, Ayesha, hope I'm pronouncing the name right. Uh, that's beautiful. Gratitude is so beautiful and so um, nurturing. Hansa, self-care. <laughs> it is kind of one word with the dash there. Yes, self-care is important. Um and it's also important to see it as an asset rather than a liability, because the more we take care of our own energy, the more we can uh, take care of, of others. Hope. Yes, Tiffany says hope. Uh, what is the world without hope? Uh, there's so many things going on around us that could make us give up. But hope makes us look forward to the future. I love that. All right. As we start here, I um, wanted to reflect on this exercise that we just did and, um, and share with you that as you're going through the submission, as you're going through this amazing process of submitting to be a speaker, um, you get to keep your intention in mind. You get to go through the submission process with your intention in mind. And you also get to be curious about the audience that you're going to serve. What are they thinking? What is their intention? What are they looking to learn from this experience? What will you give them as part of your talk or workshop or conversation 
in the Women in Product 2023 conference. So mm -hmm. let's start with our presentation. Rachel, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide. Yay. So before we get started, we just want to make sure every officially get started. Lisa's already sets to warm um, sense for us, but um, just give you a little lay of the land of here on Hopin. Right now, make sure you are in the session chat. You can do that by clicking at the very top right of your screen. We also have an event chat, so just make sure you're in the right place so we can all see all your great intention words and any other things that come up throughout this conversation. And when you have a moment, take take just a moment to complete your profile. This is what will be shared um, during the one-on-one -on -one networking if you want to exchange information. Um, and this, this slide shows just how to do that. Okay. I'll hand over to you, Lisa. Awesome. So let's, let's get the introductions going. Uh, let's start with Ms. Evelyn Chu. Evelyn, uh, can you let us know who you are and what your history and involvement with Women in Product and the conference is? Yeah, happy to. Thank you, Lisa, and hello, everyone. Happy New Year again. My name is Evelyn. I am in the product operations um, function at Coursera. I have been with Women in Product conference and the community since the pandemic. So it supported me throughout and gave me so much strength so, so happy to be here um, and sharing some of the tidbits with you all. Fantastic. So amazing to have you here, Evelyn. And I'll say that Evelyn, <clears throat> Evelyn um, was not sure that she was qualified to be a speaker when she applied. And before that, she you know, was a moderator and a volunteer. But I'm so glad to share the stage with Evelyn because I've seen her through the journey before she even thought of herself as a speaker. And so I want you to know that the women here on the stage, including me, even though I, you know, may have more experience with speaking, um, we all started where you are. We all started on this transformation journey of transforming ide our identities towards the speaker identity from not having any speaking experience and being afraid of it or being <clears throat> being a little bit intimidated and saying, you know, who am, who am, who am I to speak? Why should anybody listen to me? Um, in my case, I even had a childhood stutter, which I just overcame by speaking and putting myself out there. Um, so Malika, welcome and would love to hear more about you and your involvement with Women in Product and the conference. Yeah, thank you, Lisa. I'm very excited to be here and apologies, my voice is a little gone <laughs> from being sick. Uh, my name is Malika. I am a senior data scientist by title at Autodesk. Um, Actually, fun fact, I went to the Women in Product uh, conference in 2019, and I was really inspired by everyone that I saw speaking there that I actually started moving towards a more product-related role. And now I'm kind of a senior data scientist, data product manager in my current role. Um, I spoke at the Women in Product conference in 2021 and 2022, and very similar story. I didn't really think I had much to share, but I submitted a proposal and here we are. I've met so many amazing people through this community. I love it. So um, I'm Lisa Kustova. I'm so excited to be here and uh, see some familiar faces, some new faces. I'm the CEO and founder of Career Climb, um, which you can see kind of behind me and uh, the inspiration behind the name and some of the goals that we have a career climb is Denali, Mount Denali, which is the tallest mountain in North America, which I had the honor of climbing uh, a few years ago. And uh, before career climb, which is, uh, you know, the platform that I'm growing and building now where we serve mid-career women in tech, helping you grow in your career, reach that next level, um, especially for mid-career and more senior women. Before that, I had a career in tech and, um, you know, I quickly ended up uh, operating on the higher levels, you know, in the director, senior director, and VP of product roles. So I'm super passionate about promoting women, uh, more women in product, and also more women in tech in general. Um, I have a podcast. I have a newsletter, an email list. I'll share with you how you can join that email list later. And, um, yeah, super excited to support you on your journey 
to being a speaker at Women in Product. Let's go to the next slide. And we have one more word for the year by Courtney, who says it's ownership. I like that. All right, so we'll do a panel discussion um, about the following topics. <clears throat> so we're gonna introduce you to some monsters, which you probably already know, but you, all, but you don't know about them. And then we'll talk about the refining the idea for your speaker proposal, drafting the proposal, and um, virtual considerations. Great. Uh, I'm just looking at the chat here and I want to say something to Hannah who said that her word of the year is slower. Um, Hannah, I like that with a caveat that you um, it kind of implies that you want to like stop doing something, like try to imagine what that new something is, right? Is it peace? Is it intention? Is it um, space? Um, so that will help you visualize that like that. So then we're going to end up with some Q&A. Hopefully we'll have time for that. Uh, let's go forward. Oh, and the one-on-one -on -one mixer. Let's not forget about that. All right. So the first monster is getting introduced right now. Ta-da-da-da. -da -da -da. Drum roll. So you're going to face three monsters in your journey to submitting a speaker proposal. The first one of them is very natural. Um, think of, you know, your experience so far probably <clears throat> has to do with applying for jobs, sitting in the number of interviews, working on your resume, um, working on product launches or some products, having to draft marketing material about the product launch, uh, and making it all about kind of your experience, what you know, what you've accomplished, um, you know, talking about yourself and your experience from a first person perspective. That's very, very normal. Um, you need to shift the focus intentionally um, to be more like an author or a speaker who are also content creators. So as a content creator, you're actually creating a gift. You're creating a gift and um, we just went through the holidays. So if you gave or received gifts, you know that there are some people who are really good gift givers. They give the best gifts because they truly understand what the person on the receiving end wants to receive. And there are others who are just either not thinking about it, lazy. They just say, oh, you know what? I like coffee, so I'm going to give everybody coffee for the holidays, um, even though the, perfect, the person may be allergic to coffee, right? So it's so, so important to put on the hat of like, hmm, what gift am I going to give the audience? And specifically not the full audience of the women in product, but is there a subset of people that I care deeply about, that I want to identify and speak to? The more specific you address your content or speaking proposal to, the more likely it is to appeal greatly to that uh, portion of people. Things that are general that appear to appeal to everybody really don't appeal or speak to anyone. So I want to go around and ask Malika and Evelyn, um, what, how did you, th did this monster come up for you? And how did you deal with it when it came up for you? How did you think about like, hmm, shall I talk about the things that I know, the things that I've done? And how can I kind of turn it around and make it about them and what they want to know, what they're struggling with, what they're already thinking about? So what was your experience with that? Malika? Um, yeah. Um, so I think it's <laughs> particularly interesting uh, because I'm coming from a data science background and I'm, I'm a data scientist. So what am I going to say to a room of product managers? And I think the thing there, like you said, is to make it about the audience and make it like, what do you think would be a value to them to hear? So from my perspective at the time that I applied, um, I was relatively early career. Um, I was a data scientist. But then at the same time, finding the value in the experience that you have and seeing how that can be a value to the people you're speaking to. So the first year, as an example, I 
presented about data science for product managers. So it's kind of like an introduction, what that means to be a product manager in the data science space and things like that. So basically, like you said, packaging your own experience, but making it relevant to the people you're speaking to. Yeah, great. Evelyn, what was your experience with thinking about how can you customize what you know to deliver value to someone else? I definitely resonate with the monster about me and then the common knowledge that I have. But fortunately, I have a panel of amazing women. So the title of my talk was manage your micromanager. And I had two other amazing panelists. So for us, it's about us. And we found our common theme or pen points by just having conversations about what bugs us at work. And that's the lack of agency feeling stuck that we figure, oh, there's something there, but nobody's talking about it. And that's when we realize we have something to share. I love that. And the title of your talk is specific, uh, particularly good. And we'll talk about that in the section on titles. Um, I approached it the same way. So the first time I spoke at the conference, it was a pre-recorded talk. And the way that I thought about it, the, the, the topic of my talk was um, five keys to progressing beyond a senior PM. The reason I named it that way is because I took a look at the demographic data that women in products shared at the time. So you know, Evelyn and Malik are talking about data and science and research, doing your user research. So I, they shared at the time that half of the audience was senior PMs. So guess what? You know, I'm going to make a specific topic, a specific talk that is specifically to that level. And in my experience managing senior PMs and lots of other PMs, I have found that the senior PM is the kind of hardest level to transcend because it tends to be the last kind of most senior I see level. And that's the level where a lot of people, not just women, tend to get stuck. So it's like, okay, uh, there's a specific pain point I have observed. I'm also seeing that there's a lot of uh, these individuals that are in the audience. So I'm going to, uh, uh, and, and I was also interested in pitching to women in product, a proposal that I knew they would identify was going to be in demand for a large portion of their base. So I was like, okay, well, I have a good chance of getting my talk accepted because I'm tailoring it to half of the audience, but that half is very, very specific. So uh, make it about the other person. Think of it as you do product development. What is my user need? What are their pain points? What are they already thinking in their head? How do I enter the conversation in their head and say, okay, what are the words and what are the questions and what are the concepts that they're already thinking about? How do I take those and then present them a solution or something that will help them based on my own knowledge and experience. So you start that way. Um, can we get to the next slide? The key insight here is that you have, um, I'll wait for Rachel to go. Uh, it's not a job interview. Uh, and again, what is the conversation in your audience's heads? What are they interested in avoiding, learning, uh, getting. This is going to make you a much better product manager after the speaker submission. So even if you, even if you just do it for that, do it to become a better product manager. So let's go to the next slide. And the second monster that we're going to introduce to you is the one that Evelyn already mentioned is like, okay, well, you know, who am I to teach on this thing? You know, why should they listen to me? I don't even know what's going to be in my presentation. Like I haven't taught this concept before. Um, and this is, this is very, very common. And this is one of the most important hurdles you'll need to overcome. One of the most important monsters you'll have to battle. And that is because you don't have to figure it out during the submission stage. This is an MVP, and the MVP does not contain the full bulk of functionality that you'll need to figure out downstream. So for those of you who've iterated fast on products, on consumer-facing products, or being in a rapid iterative environment, this will be easier for you because you'll be like, okay, what do I need to know? What do I need to put together? What's my MVP? What's my strong person that I need to have an idea of what outcome is, what Maybe I visualize what the final solution is going to do, but I don't necessarily know the ins and outs and the very single thing that's going to go in there. Um, and um, I kind of want to make the key to takeaway before I have Evelyn and Malika share. So Rachel, if you move to the next slide, 
um, I really want you to know that you don't become an expert. You, you don't first become an expert and then teach. You learn, you become an expert by understanding, breaking things down and trying to help uh, others who haven't mastered them yet. And that's how you get to be an expert, right? So what does that mean? Practically speaking, all you have to do is um, <clears throat> take an idea, an idea or an outcome that you know you can again sit down, like Evelyn said, sit down with yourself or the, with your, the co-presenters and then really reverse engineer the how later after your speaker submission has been accepted. So I'll give you an example with mine. My first talk was five keys to be, uh, you know, uh, ascending or um, to getting over se se senior PM. Um, and I picked five because I looked at the format as 20 minutes, you know, intro, outro. Mm, I have I have probably about 15 minutes to teach about something. So how many concepts do I really have time to cover? maybe three minutes per concept. Okay, I'll have five concepts I'll cover maximum. So I knew I had five points I wanted to show or to bring or to teach, but I didn't need to figure out what these were. I At that moment when I wrote my speaker submission, I had a list of about 20. It wasn't until after I got accepted that I sat down with a big whiteboard and started sticky noting and and consolidating and figure out, figuring out which which of the five I was going to keep. So Evelyn and Malika, how did you go through this challenge or how, how, how did you battle this monster of like, I need to know it all now? I have a, like a personal story to share. So when the proposal window opened last year, around the same time, uh, I found out that my grandmother passed away sort of unexpectedly. So I had to do a lot of things at the moment. I had to book tickets. I had to figure out like the quarantine situation in Taiwan. And I just didn't have time to think all of those imposter questions in my mind. And then the good news is I have two other panelists. So I sort of just rushed through the creation process. And to me, uh, one of the key points is progress over per perfection. And then to your point, Lisa, I still didn't know what I have to teach. But the word I keep coming back to is that we want to connect. Because during the pandemic, so often, I, Deepa, Charlotte, my panelists, we feel we are in silos. So for us to connect with someone using the topic we produce, is much more powerful than thinking, oh, we have something to teach. So I guess that's how I get over that hump um, and get the content out there. That's powerful. That's that's powerful. No, no, th there's no one one way of getting of getting to to the other side. The key is to understand that this process will continue after you submit. Right. So it's not the submission is not the end all be all. Malika, what was that evolution for you? How did you approach it? Yeah, I think it was somewhat similar in that um, once you have an idea of this gift that you were talking about that you want to give to your audience, I would see the proposal as almost like a bullet point list of with this topic in mind, with my experience in mind what do I want to include? It doesn't necessarily need to be the content itself, but I remember seeing in the speaker submission guide, which um, there's a doc for that, um, there was a sentence there about like what framework or what takeaways or what, you know, basically what's what's what are you trying to give them? And it helped kind of break down and say, from my perspective, this is what I want to share and this is how I'm going to break it down. But the content didn't need to be there. It was more bullet points. This is what I want to include. Um, and to speak to one of the comments that I saw in the chat about uh, vulnerability and mistakes that were made. Um, personally, I the way I dealt with this in, in my presentation was I spoke about a hypothetical problem. I spoke about like hypothetical product development. And here are some common pitfalls. And if this happens, this is how you should deal with it. Or you know, this is what may happen along the way. But it was 
all hypothetical, um, but they were very valuable lessons to me. And I think they were important to share with the community because this is what you should look out for. Yeah. You know, Evelyn, do you want to address the topic of vulnerability and how you approached? Um, because I think the whole panel did an amazing job at not getting into the blame game or pointing fingers, but really elevating it at the level of like, how can you as a person who happens to have a micromanager, you know, uh, what what can you do with that? What can, What is still in your power? What is in your control? So what was the approach towards kind of the vulnerability piece versus not going into the blame game? I would say we went through iterations of storming. Like first mm. it was, oh, sucks. Why this kind of things happened to us? It's like resentful, stop being, feeling powerless. Yeah. Uh, but my panelists and I, we went through that storming process and because the benefits of having someone with you during the panel is so that you have different personality. I remember in the beginning of our panel, Charlotte, one of the panelists made a disclaimer that we are all very happy with our jobs and we are speaking based on our past experience. And I just love that because we are there to talk about a very serious and very maddening topic. But because we come from different background I sort of playing this moderator roles and we have a framework so I think like for anything that's emotional vulnerable think about how the audience can do from it because I feel a lot of times going to different conferences I left with a feeling of okay this is interesting and theoretically making sense but I don't know what to do about it so I would say something that can help ground that emotional piece is yes. the action, the toolkit. What? I think we lost Evelyn. Maybe she'll come back. Um, but this is an important point, uh, and I want to make sure we move on because we have <clears throat> Malika will have to jump in a minute. Um, this is very, very important for your submissions. If your submission looks like a venting complaint, it's not going to benefit anyone, right? So the key is, especially if you're dealing with failures or mistakes or, you know, Malika, I like that, you know, hypothetical experience. It actually puts a little bit of emotional distance between you and that event or what, you know, what happened. Uh, <clears throat> but this is, this is what we want to do. We want to make sure that we give our audience the gifts of the gift of empowerment, the gift of like, all right, as I say, you know, the playing field is uneven. If you want to climb Mount Denali, you have to carry as a woman, a uh, hundred pounds of gear between you and the sled. And there was somebody on my expedition who was arguing with that and she was not prepared and she hadn't prepped and she hadn't trained. So she got turned around but she thought it was unfair, <laughs> unfair for women to carry the same load as men. Yes, it's a different playing field, but you can still do something with it. Yeah. So I think that point is super, super important. Let's go to monster number three and quickly cover that. That one is the easiest. Lisa, thing. I had, sorry, one more point to say, because it's something you mentioned uh, earlier that I thought was really insightful is that when you're creating a proposal for this community or just in general, it's not meant to be, uh, you know, I did a great job building a great product and, you know, just a story about that. It needs to be more about what the audience can take away from your experience yes. and what you have to share with them. Yeah. And that was monster number one, right? Making it yeah. like, look what I did. This is amazing. This is why, you know, I, um, I have lots of, <laughs> lots of examples of people who started their, 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 their proposals from that point. It's easy. It's natural. Um, but we really have to think about like what is in it for them. What are they going to take away? What are the actions that they can take? What are the things that they can learn and start immediately applying? Like you should ask yourself, like going out of my presentation, what will the feeling state of the person be? And what will they also be able to practically apply in their lives? Super, super important. Uh, and you're going to talk about it in your speaker submission. So monster number three is uh, the title. Uh, so if you want to go to the next slide, um, 
the title can kill your speaker submission. I know that the committee probably looks at everything in, in like total, but even if your title gets approved and your, uh, your talk gets approved and you end up on the calendar, the calendar is very packed. There's, it's very rich. So you want to make sure that your talk stands out, that your talk is appealing and interesting to somebody. They can say, oh, I'm going to go see, watch that one. I, I, you know, because the same attraction factor is going to apply towards your submission being selected. So the title is really important. And what it should contain, it should kind of hint at as many of these things as you can cover would be amazing benefits or insights that your audience is going to take away. You're going to be specific as to who you're addressing or the problems or the benefits that you're providing. Make it clear who is it for, especially if it's, for example, in my case, it was senior PMs. Uh, and Malika may have been a, a product manager who wants to, you know, perhaps become a data PM. Uh, Evelyn's case, it was somebody who is actively right now struggling with a micromanager, right? Um, another person from our community, she targeted, uh, she had a talk specifically for moms, right? Moms in the product, uh, in the women in product community. And it also needs to spark curiosity. The biggest, biggest thing is <clears throat> if I had to teach you one thing about a title, and I have a whole handbook that I've prepared for you, you can go and download it for free uh, by going at speakerhandbook.com. Don't put the www dot in front because we're struggling with DNS settings. So if that throws off a security thing, just go speakerhandbook.com. But if I had to teach you one thing about a title is don't make it obvious. Don't give away the punchline. So, <clears throat> you know, for example, um, meditation is going to make you more productive at work. That's like an obvious Thing. That's a statement. That's not anything that, you know, sparks curiosity or is going to cause any type of, of learning or takeaways. But if you have a specific mindfulness practice that you want to teach, then you can say, hey, uh, the super easy or the amazing pra practice that doubled my productivity as a PM or will double your, pro your, your productivity as a as a PM because it's about them, right? Uh, so the title is super, super important. Um, show it to a couple of people. If you show anything to anyone, let it be the, the title and really ask like if this was an Apple, if this was a headline in Apple News, would I click to read it? <laughs> this was a YouTube video, would I click to watch it, right? That, that should be your test. How can I make my title interesting and containing a promise and being very clear about the benefits and who it's for. Uh, let's go forward because I know I'm looking at the clock with Malika still being with us. I want to get her. Um, while we're on the title, um, Malika or Evelyn, did you have any thoughts about how you thought about naming your, your talks? Um. I just like you said, a lot of, uh, I think the first year um, I named the talk, so you want to be a data product manager is exactly that it was that I was taking my experience and I was not putting your takeaways into the into the title, but you know, who am I targeting? What what might they want to find by coming to the talk? Um, yeah. And Evelyn, your, uh, the, the title of your talk, how to micro manage your micro manager is a marketing masterpiece. You know, I'm a copywriter. I, I, I'm an author. Uh, you know, I'm a, I'm an email, <laughs> I'm my email newsletter. That was like, Mwah. that, that thing is going to get a stellar open and click rate. Um, so how, how did you think about coming up with such a compelling title? Well, thank you, Lisa. And hopefully my internet will not quit on me again. Um, to be honest, when I first came up with my title, I went a little bit extreme, like went for that clickbait. Originally, it was beyond survival because I feel I am not able to survive if I had another micromanager again. But when the um, proposal community reviewed it, they took out the first part. So it just became manage your micromanager. I would say the way I think about crafting that title is really to your point, reverse engineer. I figure out what I wanted to say first. And then the title is just a 
encapsulate what the key piece is, the gem you wanted to convey. And like to your point, don't give, give away everything, but what is that punchy thing that you want people to take away with? Yeah, it's like the wrapper to the gift if we continue with that analogy, right? You don't give an un like having an obvious title, it's like giving an unwrapped gift. Here, here's your Lego set. Oh, you know, whatever. <laughs> But if you wrap it nicely and put a nice bow on it and it sparkles and it looks pretty, most of the experience of opening the gift is contained in opening the package and finding out what's inside. Um, so I love that. Let's uh, quickly look at a few of the bullet points here. Rachel, if you just want to click through a few of them. Um, and wanna, I want to get Malika to prob probably uh, give her, oh, go back, give her a um, thoughts on that before we lose her in a couple of minutes and then we'll quickly just zoom through the, the rest. Malika, do you want to speak to any of these uh, of these questions? Uh, something I did want to take into account, I'm looking at the second question, how did you incorporate who your talk was aimed at, what their goals were and why your contact uh, content was unique and timely? Uh, as I mentioned, I think Imposter syndrome can play a big role sometimes when it comes to creating a proposal and submitting something and saying, you know, I'm an expert on this and people should listen to me or they should want to listen to me, right? Um, and so one thing was that I was coming from a different area and I was relatively early career. So when I was thinking of who I was targeting with a talk, I was actually thinking product managers who are at this conference who may not who may have been, you know, senior PMs, lead PMs, but they don't have background in AI or machine learning. And with, you know, that being a buzzy, a buzzword now, um, I wanted to include content that was like, here's an introduction to it. I don't know everything about it, but this is what I do know. And now I can impart whatever I know to you. And that's what I also love about this community, that there's kind of vulnerability there. So I did mention, you know, I've, I've been working for like five years, maybe less than five years at that time. And um, here's my experience with data science. Here's what I know about AI and machine learning. That is just a basic understanding. And this is how it impacts being a product manager. And this is how you can transition to being a data PM or an AI product manager, machine learning product manager, if you choose to go in that direction. And what I found very interesting about that is I met so many people who are further ahead in their careers. So I could learn so much from them, um, but they had attended the talk because they were interested in AI and ML and being a product manager in that space. And that to me is so interesting because I have so much to learn from them, but they also wanted to hear my perspective or it's just a different perspective. Um, so yeah, I, I thought that was very interesting and fun about speaking about something that was in my experience. Um, Thank you so much, Malika. I know that you'll have to run, but yeah. uh, we really appreciate um, your comments and contributions. You have a lot of really nice you know, comments and a lot of love in the chat. If you want to connect with Malika, there is the bio section um, of the presenters. Uh, you can find her LinkedIn and um, the information that she's put there. So, Thank you so much um, for having me. Yeah, thanks. Um, uh, let's talk a little bit about format. Um, <clears throat> so Malika did a talk, which I've also done, and I think that's generally a straightforward one to start with. Uh, it's pre-recorded. You have kind of more control of it because there aren't a whole lot of live components. So you can control 100% of the experience and just kind of produce a video. Um Evelyn, what were your what was your thought process about choosing the panel format? Well, for me, it was my first time speaking at Women in Product, so it's more for like um, collective courage, I would say. Like, I don't want to do it alone. I figure if I have two other people in my uh, back pocket we together will do an amazing job so that's my thought process but the reality is if you go with the panel route I would caution the amount of work it takes 
to coordinate that, to project manage the whole process is a little bit more than what I would expect it. So just words of caution. Yeah, and it works both ways though, because um, you know when you do a submission, you kind of say what format you're submitting for. So perhaps because of the requirements of collaboration and multiple people being present, I don't, I, I have no idea. I have no insight into the speaker selection and I've never seen the volume of submissions or individual submissions on the women in product side, but I can say that based on what I've seen being prepped and sub submitted, the vast majority of people submit for, you know, the, the one person talk or one person type of format. Um, so you might, you know, you, who knows, you might just, get a little bit of, you know, oh, okay, there's like a panel submission. Let's, let's take a look at it here. Um, and it's also, in my experience, one of the times when I pitched, um, I heard back and my format, there was a request to change my format. So that is also possible to happen. Um, and I've seen that in my case, it was, and again, I have no clue at to what the process actually entailed. In my case, it was a lot of people submitting similar topics, so they wanted to turn it into panel. Yeah. Um, so don't be afraid. Don't think of like, oh, there's probably a lot of people submitting on the same topic. Fine, submit it. You might, they might say, say, okay, let's make a panel out of it. Um, you yeah, can organize a panel on your own end, on the front end, etc. Okay. And for diversity reason too, and um, the Women in Product Committee recommended not to do a panel format actually. So it's not an interview. It's a fireside chat. Everyone oh, then, has something to chat. say. So that's even more interesting to the audience that they get to hear from different diverse opinions. Yeah. Thank you for the correction. So it was like the format has evolved, but you'll see there's like different ones. Um, the one I'll talk about the workshop. Um, so <clears throat> the workshop in my mind uh, requires a higher degree of um, comfort level and higher degree of um, um, just, you know, um, ability to manage a live audience. Uh, because part of a really good workshop is a little bit about seeing what is happening in the chat, seeing what questions arise, engaging with the audience, asking them to take actions, to follow through with a process, create something while on the workshop. Those are the best workshops. And so if you enjoy that, if you like that, I thrive on that. I mean, I <laughs> build a whole business around that. So this is my jam. I love it. I love being the host. I love being the facilitator. Um, and again, you know, if you have similar experience or you have similar com comfort level, then definitely, definitely go, go for that because that is probably the most involved format. Um, and, um, you know, they need, I, I would, I would assume that women in product wants to see more and more people. Pe people stepping into that, stepping into their courage. Um, and it's a fun experience. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Let, let's go to the next uh, one and quickly cover any questions we haven't covered on. Oh, I think we got, oh, interesting. That slide was left over. Okay. <laughs> um, drafting your proposal. Let's see, articulating. Okay, so we talked about that. So we talked about the first bullet point. You know, how do you, like pick out the gift, what are the benefits, what are, like after your talk, think of it like after my talk, how are they going to feel and what are they going to be able to take away and start applying in their life? The le you don't want to give them generalities that everybody, you know, everybody knows. You don't want to be like, oh, be kinder to everybody. Okay, make it more specific. Mm -hmm. Say, during the day, have a quota of three kind words you're going to say and keep track of it. <laughs> This is general versus specific takeaway, right? Um, you don't want to like be a, have a general takeaway, which is like, oh, go and do a meditation thing. Because a lot of people may have tried and failed, or they may, you know, they may have resistance around it. So instead, chunk it down, give them something specific and tangible that they can try and apply, right? Or some specific concepts that they can you know, like in my talk, I said, after each of the five points, I said, okay, here's your homework. <laughs> I want you to take this concept and then go and talk to that person and try it out. Right? 
uh, the title, we talked about that. Um, and the three takeaways and proposal description. Um, <clears throat> yes. So once you're clear on your takeaways, the description is going to come out of that, right? Once you're clear on uh, on the gift, on what the takeaways are, on what the main ideas, who the target audience is, the proposal description is just going to describe that. Um, Evelyn, did you have any thoughts around the drafting process we haven't covered? I would say when you are drafting the proposals, do some light touch research just to see what's being said. And that can weed out a lot of like general advice, like be kind or something. So by doing those light touch research, you can sort of figure out what you wanted to focus on. Yeah, great, great point. Um, you know, articles that are ranked highly in like LinkedIn or Medium or uh, places like that, uh, you know, if the topic is hot or if, you know, it's being talked about, think of like, oh, you know, and pay attention. Like most of the articles that are highly ranked have very actionable advice or actionable takeaways. Great. Let's go to the next page. I'm um, looking at the clock here, making sure that we are staying on time. Uh, the stage is online. Um, so Evelyn, did you want to talk about the online perspective? I think by now, by now, like we're in the third post-pandemic year, I would assume everybody's comfortable with doing stuff online. I don't know. Was, was there a specific aspect of talking that online that was challenging for you, Evelyn? Well, I think a lot of people would assume when things are done online, it's just easier, faster. You just have to apply lipsticks and here you are. But there are also on the flip side, so much things out of control. For example, your internet. <laughs> yeah. In the, um, in the tutorial, uh, the women in product team did an amazing job, like letting the speaker know you need to reset your browser and all that. You need to do that, but then still like prepare for like hiccups, um, like internet or lights or electricity. So I would say like prepare and give enough buffer time in case something didn't go the way you want it to be. Yeah. And, you know, it does, <clears throat> there, there, there needs to be a certain level of, I would say MVP of production quality. So it doesn't, you don't need to have it, you know, on your desktop. You can just take the iPhone, but make sure the lighting is okay. Perhaps like get an external mic like Evelyn has like her headphones. I'm a podcaster, so I have a professional mic, but you don't need that level of, of production quality. Um, so there's a little bit of a production quality hurdle, but I would say that, you know, over the past several years, ideally you should have become more comfortable kind of speaking in Zoom like scenarios. Great. So let's move forward. Um, let's see. Okay. So there's a resource list there. Um, and then we put in the replays. Oh, go back to it for a second to the resource list. We put replays from the past two conferences. Um, another link for extracting key takeaways. Um, my um, handout that I've prepared for you, which is like a seven page manual for writing success for speaker submission <laughs> titles. This is from my experience as a, as a, as a, you know, as a, as a marketer, as an author, as a podcaster, and also as somebody who's worked with dozens of women in preparing, helping them draft speaker uh, proposals. But um, that you can find on a uh, speaker handbook Dot com Again, don't put the www dot in front because it'll trigger all kinds of DNS security settings. So uh, let's go for Q&A. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to scroll through the chat and look of, um, of any questions and we can address that. Um, <clears throat> so Evelyn's already starting to answer questions. Love it. <laughs> Evelyn's amazing. She's like, she's like, a, uh, she's like, she's, she's a triage ninja. Um, so Okay, so the recording, uh, Evelyn, you answered that. And the question was, will you be recording at home? Uh, and Evelyn says, truly, yeah, there's a production team that helps you with the recording. 
Um, next, I'm scrolling up to see levels or VPs participate in the event. It's my first time joining. Yes. Um, so, of course, there's fewer of them than uh, more, more junior levels. But I've met I've met CEOs. I mean, I, <laughs> you know, all kinds of, le of, of levels participate in women in product event. Let's see any other questions that we missed. Um, okay. Rajavi is asking, can we submit multiple proposals? Checking with Rachel and the team. I do believe that's the case. And then the second question is, can we reuse and build on a topic from one of our past conferences? Okay, so perhaps Rajavi has a topic that she has spoken about before. And so the question is, how is there a requirement for the content to be unique and never before used? Rachel or Ariana, can one of you address that? Yeah, I don't think Rachel's connected to audio. Or she's muted, actually. Huh. Can, you, can you hear me now? Yeah. Uh, yes, multiple po proposals are more than welcome. And you, the content does not need to be unique, but we do really highly suggest gearing it towards this particular audience, to the women in product audience. And you can find more information about our audience linked in the submission guide. Yeah. So, you know, if you have like, a, uh, if you have a talk that you're giving often to different audiences, you're probably already used to customizing it to a specific audience. So that would just be another way of, of tailoring, customizing and making sure that um, it's useful for this, for this audience. Let's see if there are any questions. Uh, da, 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 da. Okay. Um, let's see if you have a question, drop it in the chat. Q&A. Let's see if the Q&A, will the session be recorded? Yes. Um, anybody else? Anybody else? Any questions? Feel free to drop them in the chat. Oh, theme. Hello. Hi. Thanks, Lori. Thanks for the reminder. <laughs> um, the theme for this year's conference is build for, hold on. Uh, build, build what's next. Build what's next. Thank you. Um, build what's next. So here's the thing about the theme. Don't overthink it. <laughs> be creative. Pretty much everything that you feel is worth sharing can be, or here's how to think about the theme and tying it in with your speaker proposal. Let's say you have three to four to five ideas of things that you feel passionate about, that you feel are going to be valuable to the audience. You have specific ideas. Now, only at this stage, take the theme, take the theme for, um, for the conference and apply it as a prioritization, kind of as a weight, which, which uh, topics lend themselves easier towards tying in with build what's next. So build what's next is a, you know, aspect of the future. It's forward looking. Uh, it may be about technologies. It may be about your own growth and evolution, maybe about something else. So how can you, which of the three or four or five topics or ideas do you have are going to lend themselves more to that? And how can you then, you know, incorporate words that reflect the idea of forward looking, of future, of what is next in your, uh, in your submission and especially in your title. Uh, let's see, uh, Vanessa, I posted this earlier, but I would love to hear more on this from Lisa and the Women in Product Leadership. It would be great to hear about topics and submissions that didn't make the cut. Oh, yes. Thank you, Vanessa. I saw your question earlier. I just didn't scroll back up far enough to remind myself of it versus the ones that were accepted. Similarly, those that had positive feedback post the conference versus the ones that were not a hit. I'm not qualified to speak about that because I have no involvement <laughs> in this speaker submission process. Would anybody like to address this? Um, do are, Is feedback provided to people whose submissions are not accepted? And um, is there any kind of follow-up or like, how does it work? In regards to feedback, we do share any feedback we receive from our review committee. Um, that is sometimes lots of feedback and sometimes not much. It sort of depends on what we're given back from our community reviewers. Um, every submission is reviewed by a minimum of three um, of our community members. So lots of thoughtful consideration on every, every single submission. 
Um, as far as topics and submissions that didn't make the cut, um, you know, we received 500 submissions last year. So it's really hard to boil down and say, this is exactly why these 450 submissions didn't make it. Um, sometimes they just don't quite fit in what we're programming for the year, but they might make a um, great programming for the rest of the year. We've been hosting these blenders and those are all coming from submissions for our conference as well. Um, yeah, I wish I, I wish I had a more succinct answer in this moment. I it's a it's a tough question to answer because we do just have to say no to yeah. some so many and it is really tough. Um, and but, there's not always a cut and dry reason. But hear what Rachel just said, and I did not know this until now. This is fantastic. If your submission is not approved, that doesn't mean there isn't another opportunity. And that's very, very important because the speaking opportunity is a speaking opportunity. It doesn't matter the context or the format. You will become a more confident, better speaker the more times you get on the stage, period. So, you know, just keep submitting. Know that like it's just a law of numbers, just a law of numbers. At some point, some something is going to break through and then you know, I hope I'm not increasing the the workload for this year. Just a lot of numbers. All of a sudden, everybody's like 10, 10 submissions, but sorry. Um, sorry, but not sorry. <laughs> Lisa, can I add something? So yeah, last year, even though our proposal for the panel was accepted, it wasn't the first year I submitted the proposal. I think mm -hmm. I submitted like the year prior. It didn't get accepted. I know in the beginning of this um, like session, you said it's not a job interview. But in a way, it feels like a job interview. A lot of times, I just had this mentality that I wanted to check a box and say, I've been there, done that, I've done my part. There are parts that I cannot control, like how would com committee like my topic? How does it resonate with the overall theme? I don't want to think too much about it. I just wanted to take action and see what happened. And to your point, if the proposal didn't get submitted, it's for content, you can uh, publish on Medium or Substack or LinkedIn. There are so mm -hmm. many different channels to pollinate your brilliant ideas. This is just one. Yeah, and this is this is what you would do. This type of process, which you're doing as part of the submission, speaker submission, you would do anytime you want to write an article, anytime for those of you who know I'm passionate about developing thought. <laughs> Thought, thought leaders. I even started a club called the Thought Leader Club, um, where we work on developing content. And that's exactly the same process you're going to go through developing content, whether it's for, you know, blogs, whether it's for a newsletter, whether it's for, you know, an internal presentation. Do you know that the quality of your internal work presentation is going to go through the roof when you start approaching this process? Same process you're learning here for speaker submissions. Same process for writing emails to management. Hello, that's a content piece. You want it to be consumed. You want to make a point. Same thing for your presentations at work, especially the ones that matter. Mm -hmm. All right. Shall we take shall we take a couple of minutes and do breakout sessions? What does the woman in product team think? Yes, definitely. Let's head out to the one-on-ones and, and get connecting and get some feedback on your submission ideas. So in order to do that, you, uh, let's see, this is on here, yep. Click uh, on your left-hand side of your screen, you'll see that networking, it's got a nice red highlight on there that says now. If you click that, once you're in there, you'll get a, a prompt to join now, and that'll connect you with your fellow attendees for um, some feedback about your, your submission ideas. You can bounce some multiple ideas off, see what sticks, what resonates, all that good stuff. Thank you everyone for attending and I'll let Lisa wrap it up. Uh, great. So we're still on the main stage. Just make, making sure I know what's happening. We have a couple of, pe yeah. of oh. people go going off to blenders and not blenders to breakout rooms and we're just wrapping up. Okay. Well, the best wrap up is whatever you do, don't just think about it and do nothing. <laughs> don't let this be yet another um, shelf help that you stash on the side and you said, yeah, you know, someday, uh, if you're on my email list, you would have received an email I sent out. Yes. Yesterday saying so many of the women that I work with say, oh, I want to become a speaker. I want to become a, th a thought leader. And then they say the awful word someday. And 
there is a graveyard full of tombstones, graveyard of dreams and aspirations, and all of them say someday. <laughs> so don't let that be someday. Let that be you. And, um, you know, go and go and follow up on the resources. Go and read up the submissions guide. Um, you know, when you download the resource that I sent, you'll also be invited. I don't know if there's any spots left. I think we have, we had few, uh, as of this morning, you'll be invited to, uh, do a workshop with me, which is going to be like, and then that like writing actual, the actual submission workshop, um, not affiliated with women in product. This is like on my side. Uh, but anyway, take advantage of anything and everything, whatever it takes to get you moving, just sit down and do it. Sit down and do it, do it, do it, do it. Um, do at least one. Commit to yourself that you're going to submit at least one. So if you're still with us, I want to see in the chat your commitments. I want you to actually type in the chat. I commit to submitting. I commit to submitting. Come on. Let's see who's in, who's making the commitment. I want to see your commitment in the chat. Okay. Adeola is committing to submitting. Um, Ayesha is committed to submitting. Janissa is committing to submitting. So is Christina and Han and Dayo and Ariba. Come on. We got, we got, this is awesome. Lakshmi. Hi, Lakshmi. Lakshmi is committed. Saba is committed. Cheris is committed. Lucy is committed. Come on, come on. More, 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 more. I think we may have gotten some in the breakout rooms, but um, anyway, this is powerful. Ride this momentum. Ride this momentum. Commit to yourself. Know that this group is here to support you. We've got your back. Everybody here, there's abundance of goodwill. Everybody here wants you to succeed. Everybody here wants you to succeed. And the only way to not succeed is to not submit. So everybody go and submit. And um, we'll see you on the other side. Bye, everyone.